Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at graphs of power functions. Now we're looking at power functions here, and remember power functions have the form f of x equals k times x to the eighth power. Now these graphs specifically refer to when both our x and k values are greater than zero, so where those things are positive. And there's a few properties that I want you to notice about all of these graphs. And the first of which, regardless of which graph we look at, all of these graphs contain the point 1 comma k. Now if we focus specifically on our red graph, our black graph, and our blue graph, that's where all of our a values are positive. And if we notice, as these graphs are coming up into the first quadrant, they all pass through the origin. And now if we look at that green graph where our a value is negative, that graph is going to be asymptotic to both of our axes. So it would trace our y-axis up and it would trace our x-axis out to the right-hand side. And one last property, focusing specifically on having k values that are positive, all of these graphs are falling in the first quadrant. Now if we shift a little bit and end up with a negative k value, we'll notice that our graphs have a lot of the same behaviors, except instead of happening in the first quadrant, now they're happening in the fourth quadrant. But notice our graphs have a lot of the same behaviors. They all contain the point 1 comma k. And if we look at that red graph, the black graph, and the blue graph, where those a values are positive numbers, they're still passing through the origin. And notice our green graph, where we've got that negative a value, it's still asymptotic to our axes, except it's going down and out to the right, following that y-axis and that x-axis. Now, all of that stuff holds true when our x values are positive, but things get a little trickier when our x values are negative. So if we're still dealing with a power function, f of x equals k times x to the eighth, but if we're dealing with x values that are less than zero, x values that are negative, then one of three things needs to happen. The first thing that could happen is that our function might be undefined for negative x values. So for example, if our function was f of x equals x to the one half power. Now a one half power means the same thing as a square root. And we know that we're not allowed to square root negative numbers. So we also can't do negative numbers being raised to a one-half power. That would be an undefined value. The second thing that happens is that our function could be an even function. And remember, being even means that our graph has y-axis symmetry. So for example, if our function was f of x equals x squared, we know that that graph gives us a parabola where the right side looks exactly the same as the left side. It's symmetric around the y-axis, so that's an even function. And then the last thing that could happen is that our function is an odd function. And remember, being odd means that our graph has origin symmetry. So for example, if we were looking at the function f of x equals x cubed, that function is odd because it's symmetric around the origin. So we're going to take a look at a few functions, and we are going to look at their k values, and we're also going to look at those a values, and we're going to try to use those to make determinations about what the graph of our function would look like. So the first function we've got in front of us is f of x equals 2 times x to the negative third. So as we look at our function, 
first we're going to identify that k value. So as we're looking here, the number in front of my x is a 2. So we've got a k value of 2. And the a value is the power. So here we've got an a value of negative 3. Now, based on what we were just talking about, this k value and this a value should tell us some things about the picture. Now, one of the things we talked about with these power functions is that they were always going to pass through the point 1 comma k. So in this case, since we've got a k value of 2, then our graph is going to pass through the point 1, 2. The second thing I'm noticing is that since our a value is negative, our graph is going to be asymptotic to our axes. And the last thing I want to take a look at is whether this function is going to be odd or even. So what we want to do to check if a function is odd or even is we want to look at f of negative x. If when we plug in a negative x we get back the original function that we started with, then the function is even, but if when we plug in a negative x we get back the opposite of the original function, then the function will be odd. So we're going to look at our function f of x equals 2x to the negative third, and we're going to plug in a negative x where the x value currently is. So we're going to have 2 times negative x to the negative third power. Now when you square something that's negative, it turns positive, but if you raise something that's negative, to an odd numbered power, then it will stay negative. And when we take the 2 times this negative x in here, then we're really going to get negative 2x to the negative third power. So we got back the opposite of the original function that we started with. We had a positive 2 out in front, but now we've got a negative 2 in the front. So that makes this function odd. And that means that our graph is going to have origin symmetry. And we can graph this function out on our calculator to confirm all these things are true. Now here we've got ourselves a new function, g of x equals negative 0.4x to the 1.5 power. So as we look at that k value, it's going to be the negative 0.4. And if we look at our a value, the a value is 1.5. Now, first thing we're going to notice is that, just like before, our graph is always going to pass through the point 1, comma k. So our graph will contain the point 1, comma, negative 0 0.4. Now, the next thing to take a look at in here, because we're dealing with a positive a value, our graph is also going to contain the point 0, 0. Now, to figure out what's going to happen when our x values are negative, this function is actually going to take a little rewriting. And I'm looking at that 1.5 power. We can actually rewrite that as a 3 halves power. But then we can also break up that 3 halves power a little bit. And what we can really write that as is like a 1 half power being multiplied by 3. And if we look at this x being raised to the 1 half power in there, remember a 1 half power means the same thing as a square root. So we can really write this as negative 0 0.4 times the square root of x cubed. So as we're looking at when x values are negative, remember we can't evaluate negative numbers underneath a radical. So if our x values are negative, then this function is undefined. And again, we can graph this function out on our calculator to confirm all these things are true. Now the last function we've got in here is h of x equals negative x to the 0 0.4 power. So again, we're going to identify that k value, and k is the number in front of the x. And there's a negative hanging out in front of there, so we have to remember that means an implied negative 1. And we've got ourselves an a value of 0.4. Now with this power function, remember it will contain the point 1 comma k, so that's going to be the point 1, negative 1. But also, since we've got ourselves a positive a value, our graph will also contain the point 0, 0. And then we're going to take a look at whether this function is odd or even, so we're going to look at h of negative x. So that means we're going to plug in a negative x for that positive x that's currently in there. But this decimal exponent is going to need a little rewriting in there. 
and with 0.4 I can really write that as a two-fifths fraction and then with this two-fifths fraction I can actually rewrite that as negative x to the fifth root squared now when you take an odd root of a negative number you're always going to get a negative answer so we can really take that negative that's underneath the radical and kind of pull it out of there so that's going to be negative negative fifth root of x squared and when you square something that's negative it turns back positive so we're going to have negative and then on the inside with this fifth root and this squared power that's really going to turn back into x to the 0 0.4 power so when we substituted in that negative x we got back the original function that we started with meaning that this function is even so it has y-axis symmetry and again we can graph this function out on our calculator to confirm that all of these things are true about it that's going to be it for this video thanks for watching